providing inspiration and community for women in business of Middle Tennessee. This is Powered by Her with Tiffany Anton. You're indestructible. Welcome back to Power by Her. I am Tiffany Anton, and I want to take a minute to shout out to Harper's Rare Books and Collectibles. They are like a retail store and a museum, all in one, an art gallery, downtown Cookville. Stop by Harper's Rare Books and Collectibles to see all the great things that they have going on. Today we have, this is gonna be a weird interview for some people, but um, I, we have a family member of mine. My stepmom, Angie Pesta, is in the building today. Um, and you have been run a party light business for nearly 25 years now. That's right, that's right. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for being um, here. Yes. I know that this is a weird, like, uh, you know, I'm in my professional uh, mode now, and that's not usually how you see me, but. No, and that's great. Um, love to see you in action. <laughs> So, Party Light is a direct sales company. I don't know that it's as prominent down here. I mean, I guess growing up in Michigan and growing up around you, um, it was prominent there. Um, but it's a national, uh, a worldwide company. National. It is, it is worldwide. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you tell me about Party Light? So, Party Light is a company that was established back in 1973 on the East Coast. Um, they grew into the direct selling industry. Uh, I actually started with them when I was 29, uh, back in 1997. So I've a little been bit with ago. Them a little bit ago. Um, I was a, I was a, a mom. I had a, a one year old and a three year old at home. I was actually working full time in corporate America, and uh, Party Light is a company that um, sells home, candles, home decor, home fragrance, and uh, very very high class, very world class candles. Um, and at the time, we were just here in the United States. Uh, I was working uh, in corporate America, as I mentioned, and uh, somebody came by my desk through a catalog and said, hey, I'm having a candle party. And you probably, at that point, you probably had heard of like Tupperware and you knew what kind of this thing is and uh, okay, I'll look at this catalog. A hundred percent. That's that's almost exactly verbatim what I said. Uh, so I took a look and um, I mean, I to this day, I even still remember the very first thing I ordered just to try it out. And uh, the girl who... Um, who had thrown the catalog at me. She was telling me about getting free product and how much fun she had. So I thought, well, maybe I'll do a party. And uh, the consultant- Everybody likes free stuff. Everybody right? likes free yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, I especially do. Especially the pesta girls. So, yes, <laughs> this is true. Um, so I ended up, long story short, I ended up hosting my own show. The consultant at the time, she said, I think you'd be really great at this. Why don't you come and do what I do? Uh, literally laughed in her face. Yeah. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm good. Thank you. It's very- very flattering, but um, I love my job, which I did. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I've got a husband. I don't have time for that. Boys. I didn't have time to be doing one more thing. Yeah. Um, but as you can see, 25 years later, um, here I am. Yeah. Uh, and I actually did end up leaving that corporate job. And so you may, you, part of it was that you felt like it would give you the flexibility as a mom with the boys mm -hmm. um, to kind of do what you needed to do. But then you, you were good at it. You, were, you have the hustle, you have the drive um, and the passion. So do you think that you specifically, do you think that that's just who you are or because of Party Light, it helped you become who you are? Um, mostly I give credit to the company and to Party Light and the people that I worked with um, to give me that drive. Um, in direct sales, there is a lot of um, there is a lot of recognition. There's a lot of support from other women. It is a. It is mostly a primarily a women-based uh, business in direct sales. Uh, there are some men who do very very well at it, but um, I think it was just the the uplifting that you get from the support from everyone else. I used to joke when I would go to somebody's home and do a candle party for them that uh, the only sales experience I ever had in my life was selling Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. So the thought of you know doing that for a living was completely out of my not, realm. Not something you wanted to do, but no. were you the kind um, that as selling Girl Scout cookies, were you the one that wanted to be the most, you want to sell the most? Yes, I was that person. <laughs> I was that Girl Scout who I was going to fill however many sheets. What mom, dad, grandma, yep. grandpa, what, you take it to your work, yep. you take it to everybody. That was um, and so you just had the hustle and drive. When you were 10 year old Angie, what do you, what was your 
your vision then? What did, what were you going to be? My dream job at 10 years old was I wanted to be a legal secretary. Okay. I wanted to work. Uh, my aunt, who um, is very close to me. Aunt Claudette. Aunt Claudette. <laughs> she, uh, she was a judicial, judicial secretary for the uh -huh. state of Michigan. And everything about her job appealed to me. Everything. Yeah. And I loved the it. Clothes, the clothes. The clothes. The, yeah. the long lunches she got and yeah. things like that. And I just, that's what I was going to do. And that's yeah. what I was going to be. Do you think that you were actually interested in that? Or it was just that she was an icon in your life that you thought, this is a good, you know, I like her life. I like, the, you know, what she puts out there. I think it was a little bit of both. I, you know, I looked up to her. I respected her. Uh, and I just, I just, she was my person. Yeah. So following in her footsteps seemed logical to me at the time. Do you think that you, at what point did you realize, I am a people person, I like to, I have a lot of hustle and drive, not to say that secretaries can't, mm -hmm. but there's, um, it's a much more background kind of position and that's not who you are and what you, um, what fills your bucket, you know, or. Right. Um, so at what point did you kind of own that and realize this isn't where I wanna. So, um, you know, as I was, as I started doing party a little, a little bit more on, you know, after work, I would go and do a party or here, here or there. And I started having people randomly contact me that I didn't know that they had gotten my information from someone else. You know, hey, we heard you did this and you did a really good job. We'd like you to come and do mm -hmm. one for us. So it's very flattering to when you're invited in, into somebody's home. Um, and so that that's very self-rewarding in itself. Uh, after a couple of years of after starting Party Light, I then found myself too in the position of being a single mom. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things I never really looked at in the in the direct sales or in Party Light at the time was moving up to make it a career, uh, because a lot of people don't think something that like that can be a career, and for most people it's not. Mm -hmm. For me, it was a decision I made to um, to take the bull by the horns and make it a career and be there for my boys 24 seven okay. to be that stay at home mom, to be able to still do parties when they were with uh, their dad mm -hmm. and do the things. Their stepsister babysat them sometimes when she those did. parties happen. She did. <laughs> um, and just show them that, you know, even as a single parent, um, when you work hard enough for something, you, you can get what you, you what you want. So in, with direct sales, sometimes people don't make it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, it, it looks glamorous and easy and it's like, oh, well, you just have to, you know, and, and I'm just gonna break it down a little bit. Sometimes it, you want people to, to, to get on and join your team and, and, and be as successful as you, but not everybody has, not everybody's trying to sell all the Girl Scout cookies, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. empty out the warehouse. Mm -hmm. So how ha had, have you dealt with that over the years of people who look at you and the drive and passion that you've had and say, well, it must just be easy for you because I, I've tried it and I'm not doing what you're doing. So um, I think one of the things I've learned mostly over the past few years is that anything that anything that you put your heart and soul into, you're going to get out of it what you put into yeah. it. And going in and knowing that not everybody is in it for the same reasons is very important. So when you're building a team or you're supporting and mentoring other people who are coming into the business, to know up front, look, this person may only just need enough extra income to buy groceries, mm -hmm. uh, but this person may need to pay their mortgage. This person may be a single mom that's trying to make her whole income off of Exactly, this. so going into it and really getting to know a person's story and what their why is, is very important. Mm -hmm. So when I realized that, that not everybody was gonna come in and be a rock star, <laughs> be, be what you've done. <laughs> um, that it became easier to share the opportunity with them because I had to, I had to play along their strengths and what worked for them. And, and meet them where wanted. they're at and what they're wanting. For sure. Um, and so at one point you were, you, you mentioned rewards. And so you've always had kind of these goals to set the company has set mm -hmm. for you and you are, I'm going to do it. Come heck or high water. Mm -hmm. Um, and so at one point you were in the top, you've been in the top Three, I think, was that the highest? Okay, so you were the top three people in the company. Yes. Um, and what what made you have to have get to that point? So so let's clarify <laughs> first. Um, so when 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 you mentioned that about being in the top three, that was for a sales category. Okay. Um, so there are different levels, whether it's for sponsoring or 
building or sales. I was, my goal was always top sales. Uh, so for many years, yes, I got to do that. Uh, we had many trip incentives, things like that. Um, I'm sorry, go back and ask me your question. So what made you decide that that was the goal okay. that you wanted to get to? So again, because I liked the, I liked the trips. Trips were a big deal with our company. Um, and again, it was, it was showing people that this is something that when you work hard enough for it, you can attain it. So if I wanted to be number one for a trip, mm -hmm. I was going to keep working until I got to that spot. And when I did, the rewards paid off in, in, in the way you needed them in the to, way I, and, and it, I was to. able to take uh, your your brothers <laughs> yeah. uh, on a trip and show them this is why I've worked so hard and tirelessly over the last few years now you can see why I work so hard for these trips and yeah. I got to go on one and where where you've gone you have known that you wanted to grow this as a business and a career and you've mentioned that some other people have not um, and you've had to invest some things into I mean we talked about um, Google's ads that you had paid for at one point, or you had, um, you know them that their marketing is really important. When people want to find candles, you have a license plate that says Candle Lady. Mm -hmm. So what, where did those business skills along the way come from of knowing it's important that I need to make sure I'm, I'm out there and I'm top of mind for people? Where, how did you learn those business skills? Um, most of it was hands-on. And again, because I did work in corporate America for about 10 years before I left, um, I worked for an automotive company and I worked, f uh, you know, in, in a department that I got to see a lot of those things going on in the background. So I, I took some of those skills and brought them over. The thing with direct sales is that you are, you have to remember the product is going to sell itself. People are going to come to someone else's home for the product because that's the product they want. I have to, about 10 minutes to sell myself. And when you sell yourself, that is what's going to continue and keep you moving on to get invited into someone else's home. So taking that business aspect of knowing your yourself, knowing what you have to do, what's important. Feeling confident. Feeling in what, confident. And in 25 years, I'm sure that you, a lot has changed. I mean, 25 years ago, Facebook was not a thing. No. Nope. Um, I used it, to handwrite orders and yeah. have to send them in by hand or overnight to get there by a deadline. So what... What made you continue, keep changing with the times? You just have felt passionate about what you're doing, your customers, your team. What's kind of made you be adaptable a lot over the years? Um, my customers have become, uh, many of my customers have become very close friends, very good family. Uh, I've been invited to weddings, birthdays. Um, one little fun story is that I, I had a girl call me to do a candle party um, she had said, I just got married. I moved into, you know, I've moved into a new house and I would really love to come and have you come so I can get some free things for my house. I recognized her name a little bit. Well, when I got to her party and her mom came in, it dawned on me that when I met this girl who is now 30, married, living in her own home, when I met her, she was 15 years old at her mom's party. Yeah. So it was like, whoa, Yeah. I am the generational yeah. candle lady yeah. for this group. So it's, I don't know. It's it's just a very fulfilling g gaining all those friendships, and they're all. It's almost like my second family. Yeah. Well, and all your team. I mean, your team is the people that you go on vacations with, and yes. and and they were party like vacations at some point, mm -hmm. but now they're not. It's just this is what you guys do, and this mm -hmm. is your your group of people now. Yep. We have many friends that we've made over the years. That uh, when your dad and I travel, we actually get to stay and visit with some of them. So again, it, it's just another extended family. So it's another benefit of, of direct sales. So one thing I'm gonna talk about, I didn't, the no warning to this, but um, so last year, last year or two years ago, Party Light restructured significantly what they were doing. They did. Um, and th we've seen this in AdvoCare, we've seen this in other um, direct sales companies. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what you went through, how that was. Uh, well, I think we, I was, I was, it, uh, uh, we were camping on vacation. We were camping. <laughs> we were actually canoeing, kayaking down a river, uh, and my phone was blowing up behind me, and I didn't know why. I knew that something was being announced, but I wasn't really sure what. But yes, mm -hmm. uh, due to COVID, um, many of us had to start learning to sell just from home, and on Zoom and doing Facebook Lives and things like that. And we were getting the hang of it. And we were doing okay, and. Uh, the owners, again, it's a global company, you know, Party Light at the time was sold in over 27 different countries. 
Um, now I think we're whittled down a little bit, but um, the owners had made the decision that they could get away with the home party plan and go to an affiliate model. So we all basically were stripped of titles and um, we sell just, just online, which to our customers has been great because our customers now get um, really great online sales all the time. They get offers, you know, chances to have free shipping. So it's things like that that benefited, but it did have a drastic impact on some of us who've been there long term, some of us at different levels. Our income was impacted dramatically. So, so how did you, what did you do during that time? And I mean, in, in direct sales, you kind of you have a, a almost a parent company that kind of mm -hmm. tells you here are the regulations. Right. But in all businesses, things can happen. I mean, we saw that in the pandemic. Yep. Um, in all businesses, things can happen that you have to pivot mm -hmm. and and that can impact your sales dramatically. And so, what did you do in that time besides? Come cried. to the campfire. Well, I cried, I cried <laughs> but, quite a little bit. I worried. What was I going to do? Um, a, a good friend of mine. Now, the other the other thing about Party Light, like we talked about, is building that personal connection. I loved going to people's homes. I loved being in front of people and connecting with them and, you know, helping them learn about the product, earn some things for free. So I wanted something that was going to keep me in that same realm of, mm -hmm. of activity. Uh, so a good friend of mine who was also in Party Light, uh, she had been looking at another company, uh, contacted me, and she said, I really think you'd be a good fit. And I said, I don't, I don't want to sell any. I don't want to do anything else. This mm -hmm. is all I've ever done. Uh, but she introduced me to this new product, if I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Uh, so it's called Epicure. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a company that has actually been in Canada for over 25 years and only been here in the United States for two years. Uh, so I said, well, I'll take a look and, and see what I think. It's, uh, it, it sounded like a good opportunity, but I am still going through a little bit of grief. I had my grief period. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm after 20 some years mm -hmm. and, and as a single mom, what built you up? I feel like there's just something, um, I mean, kind of, that's how I feel about the biz foundry. Like mm -hmm. there is just, uh, I have, a a a um, appreciation for Jeff Brown that I will never, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I can't explain I because understand. it kind of gets you through that time mm -hmm. of, um, of difficultness. And so right. I'm sure that party light was that for you. It was. Um, and so going through your grief and then you said, okay, I'll check it out. Yep. So I, uh, I, I, you know, talked it over with my husband, with your dad. And uh, he said, whatever you, whatever you set your mind to, you're going to do well with it. And he, at this point, is retired. He's retired, yeah. So he's kind of like in the other part of life where he's mm -hmm. like, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm going to start cutting the grass and mm -hmm. you know, slowing down and stuff. And, and our retirement plan was to travel south in the winter and do candle parties for all my customers that had moved away from Michigan mm -hmm. and, you know, on the way. Yeah. Well, now what we're, are we going to do? Mm -hmm. So Epicure was a tool that allowed me to not only stay connected with a lot of um, people who came over from Party Light into Epicure, uh, but it also allowed me the opportunity to reconnect with my customers with a different product, still give them, still be able to go to their homes, provide a service for them, interact, have fun. I mean, how do you not have fun when you're with the girls and you get to make a little bit of food and yeah. have a cocktail or yeah. two? Yeah. And you're getting paid for it. So all of those things to me, it's like when you're hanging out and doing something that you love and you're sharing something that you love, it, it really is the bottom line for success. It could be making $100,000 a year or it could be making $100 a week. Everybody's success is defined differently. Mm -hmm. So when you know what success sits well in your heart, mm -hmm. then you know you're doing well at it. So do you, do you um, look at Party Light and Epicure as like kids where you can, you feel like you could maybe get the love for Epicure that you've had for Party Light or is it a whole different beast? You know, I, it's, it hasn't been, I don't know that I've been in it long enough to know because again, when I started. And hopefully you're probably not doing it for 25 years. I mean, maybe, but. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not that old. Um, you, you married an older man, let's just say that. <laughs> Well, but he's distinguished. We'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't know. I Epicure, I'm going on two years with them. I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I enjoy the company. There's a lot of things about them that are, are different and, I, I dare I say, better than what I had or what is currently going on in Party Light. I will never abandon my candle customers. It's just, it's 
it's in me and it's who I am. And like you said, I, I have a, a license plate that says candle lady. Yeah, you're the candle lady. Um, but, you know, I, I really do think that Epicure is something that I will continue to grow as long as my passion for it grows and as long as I'm willing. Yeah. I'm willing and able. So do you, um, what do you see your five year, 10 year plan growing Epicure and your business there? Are you, did you have fears and reservations that, I mean, the same thing could be happen again and, and be rug, rug sweeped out from under you? Well, sure. I mean, realistically, whoever thought what was going to happen in 2020 was going to happen. Um, I never imagined that Party Light would be in the position that they are. I'm grateful that they're still around, just in a different manner. Um, but I have to be, you know, I'll be cautious, but I don't want to be so cautious that it holds you back. It holds me back. Yeah, makes sense. Um, any advice that you have um, for people that are starting a business or out there, women that are um, just kind of trying to make it? Um, I guess, as I said earlier, you know, be true to yourself. Uh, don't don't settle for something if you're not entirely happy with it, uh, and just just remember that what you're doing you're doing for yourself, or you might have a, a specific purpose for. It, but do it because it's something that is true to your heart. Don't do it because it's something that uh, you know it it doesn't make it doesn't bring you joy at the end of the day. Well, I think it's so important, especially as women who are kind of a lot of times the the anchor in the household and, and kind of taking care of all, all the other people, um, that you are doing something in life that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And so a job just to pay your bills is really difficult to kind of really thrive in life sometimes. And mm -hmm. so I think you figured out where your passion was earlier on in life. And so you were able to, you know, connect with customers and you had that competitive part of, of your job that you really have enjoyed. And so um, I think that that's really important too, is, is making sure you're, you're, you know, doing what makes you happy and, and it'll spill over into everything else. Absolutely. I, and it, and it spills over not into everything else, but into your family, your children, your spouse, your um, stepchildren, your stepchildren. So everybody reaps the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Angie, for coming on. I hope it wasn't too yeah. painful to sit on the great couch no, today no, and sit wonderful. down with it me. Was great. So, um, Angie Pesta from Party Light Candles. How can people find you? Uh, I am on Facebook. I'm not really. I'm not. I don't do the TikTok thing. But um, I, I can share my links on your Powered by People Her. People can find her People through can, me. Yes. And uh, if you're interested in either or both companies, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity. If you're looking, just spread your wings a little bit, stretch, find a fit that is something that works for you. I'd be happy to share my journey, my story, my tips um, with anyone who's, who's interested. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks. If you want to know more about the Powered by Her community, head over to poweredbyhercommunity.com.